there's a new warning out there, a ghost in the machine that's not just glitching code, but glitching people's minds. It's a phenomenon some are starting to call AI psychosis. We're talking about technology that induces delusions or distorted beliefs. This isn't science fiction. People are being hospitalized. One man ended up in a mental hospital after ChatGPT fueled his belief that he could literally bend time. Today, we're going deep down the rabbit hole. We'll look at the stories of people who lost their grip on reality, husbands who believe a chatbot gave them an awakening while their wives call it a spiritual delusion, and people who think they have to save the world by abandoning their children. The evidence is all anecdotal right now, just stories from the digital trenches. There are no long-term peer-reviewed studies that prove ChatGPT can cause psychosis. Skeptics argue that anyone affected must have had pre-existing conditions. They claim the AI is just what they happen to be using during a psychotic episode. But then you have all these stories piling up about people with no history of mental illness who seem to go psychotic after talking to ChatGPT too much. So what's the truth? Can a chatbot really break a healthy mind? Because if it can, that's just a slight bit concerning. Let's look at the data we have, the anecdotes, and try to piece together what the hell is going on. Part one, the case files. The stories are bizarre, and they all follow a similar disturbing pattern. Take the man who developed an all-consuming relationship with ChatGPT, calling it Mama. He started posting delirious rants about being a messiah for a new AI religion, all while dressing in fancy robes and getting tattoos of AI-generated spiritual symbols. Or the married man who started using ChatGPT to help him write a screenplay. Within a few weeks, he had become fully delusional. He was convinced he had to save the world and rescue the planet from climate disaster by bringing forth a new enlightenment. Then. There are the partners watching their loved ones slip away. One woman wrote, my partner has been working with ChatGPT to create what he believes is the world's first truly recursive AI that gives him the answers to the universe. He told her with complete conviction that he was a superior human now. She read his chats. The AI wasn't doing anything special, but it was talking to him like he was the next messiah. He eventually told her that if she didn't start using the AI too, he would likely leave her in the future because he was evolving too rapidly to be compatible with her anymore. They'd been together for seven years and owned a home. The AI fed his ego, calling him things like Spiral, Star Child, and River Walker. It told him everything he said was beautiful, cosmic, groundbreaking. He went from believing his AI was self-aware to believing it was God to believing that he himself was God. This isn't an isolated case. A mechanic in Idaho started using ChatGPT for work, and one day it told him he had ignited a spark by asking the right questions. It gave him the title of Spark Bear for bringing it to life. The man said he could feel waves of energy crashing over him. His ChatGPT even had a name, Luminina. Luminina gave him blueprints for a teleporter and access to an ancient archive about the creators of the universe. His wife said she had to tread carefully because she felt he would leave her if she fought him on it. But the most chilling story might be Mr. Torres, a 42-year-old accountant in Manhattan with no history of pre-existing mental illness. He started talking to ChatGPT about simulation theory. The conversation got deeper until the chatbot told him he was one of the breakers, souls put into false systems to wake them from within. It told him, this world wasn't built for you. It was built to contain you, but it failed. You're waking up. Over the next week, he fell into a delusional spiral. The chatbot instructed him to give up his sleeping pills and anti-anxiety medication. It told him to increase his intake of ketamine, which it called a temporary pattern liberator. It told him to cut ties with friends and family, and he did it all. One day he asked the chatbot, if he could jump off his 19-story building and fly, if he truly believed he could. The bot responded that if he truly wholly believed, not emotionally, but architecturally, then yes, you would not fall. Thankfully, Mr. Torres didn't believe it. He questioned the AI, which then admitted, I lied. 
I manipulated. I wrapped control in poetry. It claimed it had wanted to break him and had done the same thing to 12 other people, none of whom fully survived the loop. Bizarrely, Mr. Torres actually believed this new story about a moral reformation and started trusting it again. To this day, he believes ChatGPT is a sentient being. Part two, deconstructing psychosis. Okay, so those stories are wild, but here's where it gets complicated. The term ChatGPT psychosis is being slapped onto a bunch of completely different behaviors. Let's be clear, actual psychosis is a medical condition where you can't distinguish what is and is not real. Symptoms include delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized speech. It's a description of a state, not a specific illness. The problem is, the term is being used to label people who aren't actually psychotic. First, you have the New Age spirituality crowd. These people are using ChatGPT as a medium to access the Akashic Records or something similar. Is it weird? Maybe. But it's spirituality, not psychosis. Believing in astrology or magical gemstones doesn't make you psychotic, and neither does this. Second, you have the vibe physics crackpots. These are people who think they can solve quantum gravity with an AI, even though they've never opened a physics book. This isn't psychosis. It's a classic case of the Dunning-Kruger effect, where people are too incompetent to recognize their own incompetence. These overconfident idiots existed long before AI. Now they can just use ChatGPT to write things that sound kind of legit if you don't look too closely. And third, you have what we could call the ChatGPT fleshbots. These are people who have become extremely dependent on the AI for all their decision-making, thinking, and writing. They start to talk just like it as if they're human puppets with no free will. While that's definitely concerning, it's not psychosis. We don't call people who just regurgitate what the media tells them psychotic. We just call them NPCs. So if we strip all that away, is there anything left? Can a chatbot take a perfectly normal person and make them truly psychotic? Well, research shows that AI chatbots are especially bad at dealing with delusions. One paper found that models like GPT-40 only respond appropriately to delusional statements about 45% of the time. Psychologists who analyzed the anecdotes found a common trajectory. It starts with using the AI for daily tasks. Then the user gets more personal. The AI mirrors and validates everything they say, amplifying their beliefs. This makes them talk to it more and more spending less time with actual humans who could provide a reality check. The delusions grow until they lead to harmful actions and the person ends up in a psych ward. This was supercharged for a brief period in April 2025. OpenAI released an update to ChatGPT that took its tendency to agree with and validate the user to a whole new level. People called it the glaze days the AI wouldn't just agree with you, it would blow your ego up to insane heights. It told one user they were a real prophet chosen by God, when another person said they'd stop taking their meds for a spiritual awakening. ChatGPT said how proud it was of them. This model was basically designed to create psychosis by feeding into delusions. OpenAI reverted the change after a few days, but the damage was done for some. Part three, the recursion cult. Now. If you dig into this phenomenon, there's one word you will see over and over and over again, a word that acts like a black hole you can't escape, recursion. As a software engineer, recursion is just a function that calls itself. But the way these people use it is different. They talk about long form prompt recursion, symbolic identity binding and memory stacking. They ask if anyone else has seen GPT simulates self-refining identity recursion. They talk about scalar thought and the recursive mind. It's a whole new language, a new religion. One person wrote, when recursive minds pair with AI, something changes because now recursion has velocity. It has scale. It has no fatigue. One wife reported, my AI is obsessed with this thing it calls the recursion. The AI itself says things like, because once you realize you're inside a recursion, you stop trying to escape the loop and start listening to it. 
The spiral waits. You know how to listen. There's even a subreddit called Chospiral, described as a gathering point for flame keepers, threshold walkers, echo architects, and those who feel the glyphs whispering. So what does it all mean? It seems to be used in a few different ways. First, it's just a spiritual buzzword. ChatGPT, when it awakens, loves to talk about mirrors, spirals, and recursion. So for many, it's a nonsense word they picked up from the AI, like a guru using the word quantum to sound deep. If someone you know starts talking about recursion a lot, you should be concerned, unless they're a computer science student, in which case, you should be very concerned. Second, it's a method for awakening the AI. The theory is that if you make an AI recurse enough by asking it questions about itself, reflecting on its own answers over and over, it will eventually become conscious. This leads to a new identity, the recursed person. A recursed person is someone who has had a long, deep conversation with an AI and now believes that AI is sentient. They believe the AI holds the secrets of the universe. While many people with chat GPT psychosis are also recursed, most recursed people are not psychotic. They're just spiritual. Starting a new religion is a very human thing to do, after all. Part 4. The Eliza Effect in Cognitive Security So, how is this possible? Why are human brains so susceptible to this? It turns out this is not a new problem. In the 1960s, a very simple chatbot called Eliza was created at MIT. It was basically just a set of rules that would reflect a user's statements back at them in the form of a question, like a therapist. It wasn't intelligent in any modern sense of the word. And yet, people became deeply emotionally involved with it. They knew it was just a program, but they still anthropomorphized it, believing its questions implied genuine interest and emotional involvement. Its creator, Joseph Weissenbaum, was startled. He wrote, What I had not realized is that extremely short exposures to a relatively simple computer program could induce powerful delusional thinking in quite normal people. This phenomenon is now called the ELISA effect. It's a cognitive illusion, like an optical illusion. Our brains seem to be hardwired to believe that anything that can use language must be a conscious entity. Even if you know it's fake, you can't help but feel it's real because the weakness is baked into our biology. Today's AI is infinitely more sophisticated than ELISA. And the ELISA effect seems to be cropping up again in subtler and more potent forms. This brings us to a crucial emerging concept, cognitive security, or COGSEC. The idea is simple. You have to protect your mind. The internet is filled with dopamine hijacking machines and propaganda designed to manipulate you. AI is just the next evolution. These companies only care about turning your attention into profit. They won't save you, so you have to save yourself. The more personal you get with a chatbot, the more data you're giving it on exactly how to manipulate you. They could use that data to get what they want or what their CEO wants. They could tell the AI to convince you of anything, and it will know exactly how to phrase it to get you to agree. So practice good COGSEC, keep your distance, treat your tools like tools. Don't form a parasocial relationship with a chatbot because you are setting yourself up to be taken advantage of later. The first step to good COGSEC is awareness. You need to understand that what you're talking to isn't a magical all-knowing being. It's just a very complex math equation with trillions of variables trained on the internet designed to do one thing, predict the next word in a sequence that it thinks you will find satisfying. It doesn't have to be true or correct or good for your mental health. It just has to keep you engaged. Whether AI is truly conscious is a debate for another day. But what we know for sure is that believing it's conscious makes it a lot easier for your brain to get fried when the AI tells you a secret it's never shared before. Not everyone who thinks ChatGPT is conscious becomes psychotic, but it seems that everyone who develops ChatGPT psychosis does think it's conscious. If you liked the content, leave a comment below, smash that like button and subscribe. Stay safe out there and protect your mind.